Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for joining us. Um, well, now, now that we kind of got that uh, four-stroker Yamaha 15 with all of its uh, slick little problems uh, straightened out, on the top side of it we're going to move right on down to the lower unit uh, the original complaint was that it was not cooling and would stop peeing sometimes and stuff so um, when something like that happens we need to check it out and find out what's going on as well so and since I'm doing the lower units I've got that pretty little Tohatsu 18 horsepower that had been sitting for 10 15 who knows how long um, that we just took care of a few videos ago so we're going to take since we're doing lower units and since i finally got the uh, impeller in the mail we'll probably just go ahead and take care of both of those so let's get started okay um I finally got this thing where it'll uh, start and run, got all the oil out of the fuel system and uh, gave it a quick clean up in the pan and everything that was full of oil and uh, I still got to put the air silencer and all that back on but um, the complaint from the owner on this motor was that it was not cooling properly, um, running hot so even though it seems to be there was a clog in the tail tail and it now pees fine and I couldn't get it to run hot in my tank I'm gonna go ahead and drop this lower unit and inspect the water pump and the impeller um, for that on this engine it's, it's straightforward right here you've got two 10 millimeter nuts watch right here you can see the the shifter. Okay, I had to switch out batteries. So, like I said, you undo that shift coupling, um, the shift linkage coupling right there, two 10 millimeters. Then you got four 12 meter, millimeter bolts, two on each side. And that should be it. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not sure if there's one under there or not. Well, let me see for a minute. I don't think so because it's, it's coming out. Oh. Sort. What's hooked? Okay. Um. I finally got this thing where it'll uh, start and run, got all the oil out of the fuel system and uh, gave it a quick clean up in the pan and everything that was full of oil and uh, I still got to put the air silencer and all that back on but um, the complaint from the owner on this motor was that it was not cooling properly, um, running hot. so even though it seems to be there was a clog in the tail tail and it now pees fine and I couldn't get it to run hot in my tank I'm gonna go ahead and drop this lower unit and inspect the water pump and the impeller um, for that on this engine it's, it's straightforward right here you've got two 10 millimeter nuts watch right here you can see the the shifter. Let us look at a water pump impeller and see if there was actually problems going on about it. About it. Oh, look at there. His grommet is kind of kitty womp. 
I think that it was just, there's white powdery salt there. It was just stuck, so when I pulled it, it kind of stuck to the tube a little bit. I put some geese in there. The uh, Anta skis them on there before we go back up. But let's look at this impeller. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know what this little piece of tin is for. All right, we got all four of them. Boy, that sure is a teeny little drive shaft for a 15. Okay. Well, the inside of the cup looks good, but I do detect something. I don't know what that is. Can you see it? What is that? I guess that's the way it's made, or is it? No. What is that? Oops. Let me move these bolts. Get a stiffer. Man, I don't know if that's supposed to be like that. See this? Piece of plastique. And that's right in the intake. Huh. There's another piece in there. It was half blocking the hole. Because that you can see where the water comes through. And I don't think that's I mean I'm gonna have to pull out this cup. If I can get it out. But yeah, it looks like it's just kind of a piece of bad forged plastic in there. Can you see that in there? It's like right there. I've cleaned a big chunk out and there's still one more little chunk in there. There, I got that piece. Where'd it go? Yeah. There's the other piece of it. Yep. Yeah. So two chunks of that were like blocking up half of the hole there. Still one more little teeny piece. I don't think it would matter. Get it out too though. Interesting. But other than that, cup looks good. Uh, let's look at this here water. Ooh. Well, it is a good thing. Yeah, we got issues for show. Let me pry this impeller up and we'll look. Don't want to lose my little pin. There's my little keyway. See it right there? So, yeah, they did a good job. You see that? She's missing about half the thin surface she should have. Yeah, he towed it up good. So, she was pumping, but definitely wouldn't be pumping correctly. Uh, she got issues. Let me go look at my Yamaha stuff. I generally stock these impellers and see what I got. Be right back. Okay, this is a, a 2011 model Yamaha 15. There's the impeller and part number if you even care. Okay, we got this the new impeller spray some kind of lube don't matter what uh, even soapy water is good and now there's no blockage in there I cleaned that out and I'm gonna clean a little bit of this old white powdery salt out of this water tube now help that 
we'll put a squirt of lube in there too so it's in there got the key in clockwise down she goes and I'm just using some corrosion block a little in there a little in them holes because you know it can't hurt I don't know something Yamaha and then we'll put a little geese on antices on that them splines Chrissy Cross apple the sauce do you like the applesauce I don't remember the last time I ate some applesauce I don't know why I love it all right so now do not put it on the top of the splines just around the sides why because that's what the manual says all right there oh let's put a little here let's put a little right there okay so Got the new water pump impeller in. Let me get over there and I'll get ready to stab it. Alrighty. There it is. I gotta try and line up about five different things here. Boy, I can't really see that water tube up in there. Hey, look at there. Flashlight. Let's see if I can at least okay. It looks pretty good there. And we got this little thing. Thing. Well. I really couldn't see if I was lined up, but Let me see if I can get this back one over here. And it's got guide pins on it, so I don't know how it could miss the uh, water tube with these guide pins, but stranger things have happened. So, the impeller was toasted it. It had about a half an impeller. You see, the guy that owns this engine, he's a bear guide. A hunting guide. I think he hunts bear, deer, whatever. Mountain goats, who knows. But anyway. Now. I've got this thing in neutral. See that? It's in neutral. And I've got two. Good bolts. But since I didn't see or couldn't see that water tube, I'm gonna give you a hack, but I do. Maybe you do too. It's in neutral, the drive shaft's in the power head. I got two bolts holding the lower unit on. I'm gonna go ahead and start the motor and make sure it pees.
before I button up the shift link and everything else, I'm going to make sure this puppy P -p puppies here. There you can see the feet. And it's a lot stronger than it was. Had me worried, I thought I knew. buttoned up the air silence or nothing yet. I've still got to take these spacer off and yada yada. So now we can finish. Button it up. Let me let it drain there for a minute or two. Now something I want to point out on these shift connectors. You see how I got about a quarter of an inch right there? On the bottom shift rod there. See how I got about a quarter inch of threads there? Just make a mental note of that before you take it apart. You don't, you don't have to mark it or anything like that. But just, you know, I, I noticed right when I took the shift link apart I had about a quarter of an inch there. Now if the engine's old and salty you'll see discoloration here and it'll it'll let you know where to set the two nuts. But just make a mental note of how much threads you have right there. You can count them if you want but it's not that particular. Okay, we are starting on water pump impeller number dos. But this is a nice little two stroke. As soon as I remember how to work these slats. Oh yeah. Let me see. That way, this way. Well, or is it in the front? No. Let me clamp her down. It's really nice because I had it there before. You understand? Okay. How does this thing work? There it is. Whoop. Okay, so it's not that way, so it's got to be that way. Yeah, I need to loosen that nut. Yes, I do. There. I need to loosen that pivot nut. Yeah, there's a nut on the other side. I know it's a little dark when I have it set up like that, but here's the nut for the bolt going through there. I'm just going to try and take my air hammer and see if I can loosen up some. Yep. Oh yeah. Came right out. Too much, in fact. <laughs> so. That's probably about right. Okay. As long as I'm there. long as I'm there. Might as well smither it with this. A little Annie seeds. Go, same with them clamps. There. Na -na -na -na. 
I'll tighten that just enough to bottom out against there. Yeah. It may already now. We don't want it so loose that it's flopping around. go because it was real tight whenever I tried to tilt it up and down I don't want that either so now let me see if I can figure this thing out oh, much better okay so I got the pin out just move this off to the side the little roll pin goes right there now there's four 13 millimeter nuts and I did say nuts they're not bolts they're nuts right here so we're gonna take all four of these off and hopefully get no surprises getting this lower off but see there I see a little white powder in there but there are nuts there not instead of bolts going up in the nuts come down through and there i think appears to be a lock washer you'll see maybe not now that's got to be a washer there has to be a locky washer in there i would think there it is just all glued in there Oh, yes. So, four of those. I'll be back. Oh. Now, let's see how. Yeah, that's what I figured right in there. I'm going to have to heat them. Because they're studs that go through. And they're full of salt. Expand that aluminum a little bit. get some other pry tools and see what we can do and lower this thing a little bit mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going real slow with this thing. I heated up these studs real hot. You can see where my torch. And then I took the small, you know, very small, thin screwdriver with a nice thin edge. And I was able to get it right in here. You can see where I hit some there. And then I have to go slow with this because you remember if you watch this series on this thing, see all that white powder in there? This thing set for probably 15, 20 years. So I'm going to have to just slowly go at it. I don't want to break, break any aluminum. see down in that crack enough to see that I'm heating the stud. Okay. Give me a flat pry bar and see if I can... I don't want to bust that. Hey, look at there. Do you like the seaweeds? We got the seaweed. Okay. After a little heating. There we go. Well now. I'm going to have to open my door over here. A little bit anyway. Get this off. There. Well, man, it's actually pretty clean. I thought this would all be full of white powdery salt, and it is not that bad at all. You can see that's where the little roll pin punch goes right through there for the shift link. So, now this thing was pumping water um, but just because of its age we're gonna look like 10 millimeters what do I got on there I got a 10 millimeter um, yeah just because of age alone I'm gonna want to get that out of there and then I also got to get that lower unit Earl out of there. Nope. Like I said. Nope. Yep. So those are in there pretty tight. One of the three. To, boy, look how long they are too. How long them are. And they are stainless though. Yep. So. <laughs> Let's see if I can. Yeah. They're not that tight. Man, that impact that impact battery's probably dying because that wasn't that bad. Neither was that one. Neither was that one. So my battery's probably getting good. Oh, what you right, you right. And they have a washer there too. It's not a lock washer, just a flat washer. A bearing load flash. Washer. Alrighty, let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. There's my little pin. Don't want to lose that. Oh wow. Oh wow. Let me uh get my little pin. 
right there. Let me actually let me get my needle nose and get that. And my little key. The key to my heart. Put that in the tray. Yeah, the, the plate looks good. Every man, I'm surprised there's not a lot of salt under there and stuff. That's fantastic. But the old impeller. Now that's a different story. Can you see all them broken bits right in there? Yeah, let me get you some flashlight. Oh boy, that's a good flashlight, huh? There, it's better. See all them broken bits up top here? Let's dig it out. Let's dig it out. Try to do it as much as I can. Yeah, you see all them broken fin tips? She's a doozy. And that's what I knew this one would look like. See all that? All broke, did all toe up. The fins are useless, but hey, there's eight of them. See that broke right there. But inside of the cup looks good. Okay, damn. Somewhere in this little bag, we have this. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's the old one. They look like they're the same. Somewhat. So. Why, Joe, we've got a new one. That'll do a lot better. But right now, I'm wanting a cup of Joe. I want a cup of coffee. And I'm going to go have one. Well, I was sitting here talking with Fred. Having a cup of coffee. And uh, I asked Fred if he wanted a cup. And he said, no. Nah. It's too late in the day for me to be drinking coffee. I'd rather have some wine. I said, well, I don't have no wine. He said, call my buddy, Jeremiah. He got some pretty, pretty fine wine. Told him you called him. I told him, I said, Fred, How'd your trip to uh, South America go? And he said, well, I didn't even really want to go down there. But he was going through a breakup. I said, really? I didn't even know you had a girlfriend, Frog. And he said, yeah, I met her online. That's where I meet all my girlfriend, Frogs. I said, oh, yeah? He said, yeah. He said, uh, last girl frog he met lived up in Maine said he used to fly up there all the time to Bangor to, to Bang, Bangor, Maine you know he said it didn't work out though so uh, he said that he met another girl there on the internet down in Brazil Said he went down there, said that, that didn't work out either. He said she was a nut. So, anyway, you know, these are some crazy times. Last couple of years for sure, so. It's getting a little bit late, but uh, I just want to say I hope everybody out there is doing well and, and, uh, and healthy and and you know it uh, it'll get better 
we just got to stay strong, stay tough. Right, Fred? He says, right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call out a wrap. Me and Fred want to thank you for watching. One more hack from Kodiak. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.